The current trend in the automotive world right now in 2022 is to build vehicles that are adventurous, fun to drive, great year-round daily drivers, and also, of course, provide a good amount of practicality and utility. And that basically describes the entire crossover lineup for Subaru. But maybe, just maybe, you're looking at buying a Forester and you think, you know what? It's just not enough. The 8.7 inches of ground clearance and Subaru symmetrical all-drive coming standard just doesn't meet my expectations. Just isn't enough for me, where if I do want to go off-road, maybe it's just not going to be able to tackle those elements. Well, you're in luck for 2022, because we have the new Forester Wilderness, a vehicle that takes things to a whole new level. Maybe you're looking at buying a Ford Bronco Sport, or maybe you're looking at a Jeep Compass or Renegade. Well, now the Forester has to be on your list of considerations because you have a bit more of a aggressive plastic cladding up front and for the side profile so that if you do go into deep mud and also deep snow, you don't need to worry about scratching that paint. But also you have better ground clearance as well, better towing capacity, and that is not all. We're going to go over everything for this crossover, see what is different for the 2022 model compared to other trims for the Forester like the Sport or the Limited or the Premium and also see if you are looking at buying a vehicle at around $40,000 that is a bit more rugged and off-road capable, then maybe taking a look at the Forester Wilderness might be a great decision. Now before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Subaru of Wakefield in Wakefield, Massachusetts for allowing me to do this review. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Subaru inventory. Now, of course, with the car shortages, maybe you're not gonna be able to find what you're looking for, but Subaru of Wakefield is taking orders right now, whether it is for the Forester Wilderness or anything else in the Subaru lineup. Also, of course, if you are looking at buying a vehicle right now today, they have over 50 used vehicles on their inventory, so definitely check out what they have. Also, before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. Subaru has built a strong and proud reputation throughout the last two decades as being the brand that takes year-round versatility seriously, where even their sedans are equipped with all-wheel drive. But with a new rival in the Ford Bronco Sport and the shift to more rugged crossovers in general, there's now a demand for a more capable vehicle, and that's where the Wilderness Badge fits in nicely. While rarely you'll come across a buyer who is unsatisfied with what Subaru is offering with the Forester, off-road enthusiasts have been begging the brand to revamp their crossovers to better take on the elements. And from a competitive standpoint, creating a new trim and sub-brand is easier than introducing a whole new vehicle that may not appeal to loyal consumers. Starting off with pricing, the Wilderness comes in at just under $34,000. And despite costing almost a couple grand more than the Limited, it is considered a mid-level trim. Just by staring at this Forester, it becomes abundantly clear that Subaru made some changes to the suspension. And with longer coil springs and added shock absorbers, this Forester sits a half inch higher to give you 9.2 inches of ground clearance. Amazingly, none of this alters the ride quality, and that's something we'll get into later, as the Outback Wilderness lost its car-like on-road demeanor after being lifted. Also new are raised roof rails that can hold up to 220 pounds, which is 45 pounds more than your standard Forester, and 800 pounds when this vehicle is not in motion. Going one step further with the utility, the Wilderness can now tow up to 3,000 pounds, and that is thanks to Subaru reworking the transmission to provide better all-around capability for adventurers who may have looked elsewhere for a crossover that's equipped to meet their demands. With 2022 ushering in a mid-cycle refresh for the exterior, you're going to notice some minor changes besides the aggressive plastic cladding up front, which is exclusive for the Wilderness. New are redesigned headlight housings, which do alter the appearance and bring some individuality to this crossover, as this generation for the Forester is becoming a bit outdated, and now it stands out in the lineup. Made standard last year is steering responsive LED headlights to improve visibility at night, and when you're out on the trails, the hexagonal style fog lights will help light up the path you're on. Other alterations include a trim-specific front grille design, 
brushed aluminum accents for the lower portion of the front bumper, and matte gray finish for the hood to minimize sun glare. Instead of simply blending in on the roadways, the Forester now has an aggressive presence. And whether you're looking to make a good first impression or not, this compact crossover does draw quite a lot of attention. Moving over to the side profile, this Forester is sitting on 17-inch aluminum alloy wheels in matte black finish, wrapped in all-terrain tires. As we saw with the Outback Wilderness, cladding around the wheel arches and along the entire length of the vehicle are far more prominent than other trims, letting you know this model is designed for the off-road. Black hexagonal texture folding side mirrors with turn signal indicators will add some color contrast, and you will have blind spot detection for added safety. Then coming around to the back, the plastic molding for the rear bumper takes precedence, and it's probably what you'll focus on first. But the contrasting hexagonal texture accents that outline the rear window and integrates into the taillights is a cool cosmetic feature that you'll only see on the wilderness. Blacked out badges continues the lower profile theme, and seen throughout this model is the wilderness emblem to let you know this isn't your average everyday forester. Under the hood, the wilderness is powered by the same 2.5 liter boxer four cylinder engine found in all foresters, putting out 182 horsepower and 176 pound feet of torque, and as usual is paired with a CVT. Since this was an on road review, a few observations were made during the test drive. And unlike the Outback Wilderness, I was a bit surprised that there wasn't a more noticeable difference in the driving dynamics compared to a Sport or even a Touring. So we are now behind the wheel of the 2022 Subaru Forester Wilderness. I only wanted to do this quick test drive really to go over some of the differences in terms of the driving dynamics. I have reviewed this vehicle so many times over the last two years that I feel as though I'm going to be redundant. Hey, nice Wilderness for the Outback just passing by. But honestly though, with the added ground clearance, it doesn't really change up the driving dynamics at all. Even when it comes to uh, the off-road suspension, you're not gonna notice much of a difference on-road. Obviously, off-road and in deep snow, mud, and dirt, the added ground clearance and the stiffer suspension is gonna go a long way. But one thing that really impresses me here is that Subaru didn't mess around with the driving dynamics too much with the Forester because with the Outback, it's a completely different vehicle if you opt for the wilderness, where it does feel like a crossover compared to a regular Outback that does have more of a car-like driving dynamics and experience where it feels more like a lifted station wagon and also maybe even a lifted legacy more than anything else. Whereas with the Forester, there's really not much of a difference at all. I'm not really noticing anything drastic here that I would be like, wait a minute, this is a vehicle for a completely different market and segment. Honestly, I think that if you own a Subaru Forester, an older one, and you want to upgrade to the wilderness, it's not going to feel like a completely different experience. It's not going to feel like a completely different vehicle. The only real change here is that with the added ground clearance, you sit higher up off the ground, which I think actually makes this vehicle feel a bit more safe, where you can see everything around you, also, of course, you can see everything in front of you. So if you are going off-road, you have a little bit more uh, confidence when you are maybe going over some of the rocks and the ruts and the imperfections on those back roads. But it doesn't really uh, change the on-road experience. So let's get on the highway here. And one thing that I love about Subaru's CVTs is that they do mimic gear shifts quite well, where they don't feel like the CVTs found in the Nissan Rogue or other Toyota and Honda products. They've done an amazing job where it does mimic those gear shifts. Now, one thing I will say here though, is the fact that with the all-terrain tires, and when you get up to speeds around 40 to 50 miles an hour, you are going to notice the road noise kick into the interior. It's not as quiet as a regular Forester. So keep all of that in mind. Obviously, if you are looking at buying a wilderness, that's probably not going to be too much of a drawback because you want to have the off-road capability. You want to have those tires that can take on different types of terrain. Now, you are going to notice the body roll. 
right around 40 miles an hour, you feel it, I'm swaying a bit more, and you don't feel as planted to the road. And I noticed that with the Outback Wilderness last year, but compared to a regular Forester, you don't feel as connected to the road. So keep all of that in mind. So I think any of the changes that the added ground clearance, the all-terrain tires, the stiffer suspension, what that's all gonna do is help you for the off-road, for the deep snow, the mud, and the dirt. But on road, you are gonna notice that it does take away from really the softer feel, the quieter feel, and, and more of that regular, traditional, compact crossover uh, driving experience. But honestly though, when it comes to the suspension, it's still pretty soft. I can go over the bumps pretty well, and I'm not getting abused on these horrible New England roads. So honestly, uh, with the Wilderness trim, it's really not that bad. It's not much of a difference. And even if you have no intentions of going off-road, you just like the looks of the additional plastic cladding for the front and the side profile, you're gonna feel right at home here. It feels really nice. It's still comfortable. It's still daily drivable. It's still family friendly. The greatest takeaway during my time behind the wheel is that the Forester Wilderness is not going to feel like a body on frame truck, nor is it going to resemble the Ford Bronco Sport. Subaru retained its crossover demeanor while at the same time improving capability, but not diminishing the overall ride quality, which is why if you plan on spending majority of your time on the pavement, you're not going to get behind the wheel every day regretting your decision by opting for the wilderness. As always, Subaru's symmetrical all-drive system comes equipped on all Forester models. However, the necessary changes made to this crossover where it's more versatile sadly has a negative effect on fuel efficiency. As you're looking at right around 25 miles per gallon in the city and 28 miles per gallon on the highway, as standard models receive 26 and 33 respectively. Stepping inside for all 2022 models, there's no changes compared to last year. However, the Wilderness trim will set itself apart with Subaru StarTex Waterston fabric seats that have a nice premium feel to them. Similar to the cloth and leather upholstery that's offered on the Forester, bolstering isn't aggressive since it is a normal compact crossover, but support and overall comfort garner quite a bit of attention. Also unique to the Wilderness are copper accents on the steering wheel and gear shifter, and a subtle touch is the contrast stitching on the dashboard to add some individuality to this trim. In front of you, between the analog gauges, you will have a digital information display, and by using the buttons mounted on the lower left side of the steering wheel, you can scroll through different menus and features. And if you're familiar with the Forester, there's no surprises as Subaru hasn't updated any of the technology that you'll be interacting with on a daily basis. Getting into more incentives as to why the Forester Wilderness is worth upgrading to over premium or sport begins with the secondary screen above the infotainment system. New and exclusive for this model is a 180 degree front facing camera to give you better vision as you traverse over rocks, deep snow, and ruts in the road. And when you're not out exploring, this angle can help aid in parking. It's from here where your turn by turn navigation, climb control displays, and outside weather are all shown to you. You can also monitor your eyesight driver assist features from this screen as well. With the wilderness sitting between the Sport and Limited, you will have to pay extra for some features, such as the upgraded 8 inch touchscreen with onboard navigation. This $1,800 package also includes the Harman Kardon Premium Audio System and a power liftgate. While some critics would like to see this made standard, it should be noted that the Limited trim offers a similar package for the larger screen and Harman Kardon speakers. So when you factor in the utility and improved off-road capability that the Wilderness provides compared to other Foresters, it is worth paying the extra cost. Even better, reverse automatic braking is standard to go along with a backup camera with trajectory. For buyers who prefer a traditional dashboard layout, there will be physical buttons to quickly get you to different menus, and you'll have dials for the volume and tuning. New for 2022, while as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility make their way onto the Forester. But sadly, Subaru hasn't incorporated a wireless phone charging pad into the center console or storage compartment for better convenience. Continuing on, unlike some rivals in this market, all your clock control settings can be accessed by using the dials and buttons found below the user interface. 
and typical for most Subarus, your two level heated seat switches are placed on the center console itself. New for the Wilderness is an amped up dual function X mode with low ratio gradient control, which now gives you the ability to take on deep snow and mud, but those all terrain tires and added ground clearance will supplement your off-road experience. For the center storage compartment, you'll have enough room for small items. And rounding out the front seating area, above will be a power moonroof to let in a lot of natural light to the interior. Now for passengers in the back, I'm gonna do my best to not be redundant and reiterate everything I've been saying about the Forester for the past few years or so. Now, what I do like about this particular crossover in the Subaru lineup is the fact that I believe it's the most family friendly in its price range. So of course it's bigger than the Crosstrek, but also as we're gonna demonstrate once we check out the middle seat, this is also more practical than the Outback. But starting off on the passenger side, the seat is adjusted further back. It's also somewhat on a recline. And I still have a few inches of legroom to work with here. Now, of course, I'm not the tallest person out there. I am around 5'5", five five, so keep that in mind. But if you do have kids back here, they should be nice and comfortable. There is enough legroom and, of course, headroom where they're not going to feel claustrophobic. They're also going to have this feeling of being in a much bigger vehicle than in reality. So you can have average size adults back here and they should be pretty comfortable. Now for the center seat and this is really the deal maker for me with this vehicle is the fact yes the center hump is somewhat aggressive but it's not so aggressive where it takes away from the leg room or even the shoulder room. I do think you could try squeezing in a third person back here for sure. Now of course it's not going to be an adult over the height of six feet tall but I do think that if you have three kids back here it should work. There is enough room where you don't feel like it's too cramped back here and really you can't say that for a lot of compact crossovers and once again that's one of the reasons why I really do like this vehicle in the lineup and for compact crossovers in general just because it is family friendly it is accommodating. And then on the driver's side the seat is adjusted to someone of my height, around 5'5", five five, and I have plenty of legroom to work with here, and that's one of the differences compared to the Outback. So if you remember my Outback reviews that we did last year, it was a bit more tight. It felt more car-like in the Outback, whereas the Forester is a traditional crossover, and you see that, whether it is the legroom or the headroom, there's a lot of space to work with here that I think is going to make people who have families very happy. Also back here, you will have two rear air vents to go along with two USB inputs, but sadly we do not have heated outboard seats. That's the one sacrifice you're gonna have to make if you go with the Wilderness. I would like to see that make its way in the future for this vehicle, but I really think that's the only feature that really truly is missing for this particular model. So if you can overlook that, I think the Wilderness is gonna be a great fit for you. And then rounding out the rear seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now coming around to the back, you're going to receive a power lift gate. And what I really like about the Wilderness trim is that even though it is a mid-level trim in the Forester lineup, you receive a lot of value to the features that you get here, where they are standard or optional, like that 8-inch touchscreen, but also the fact that you have the power lift gate, you have the water system fabric seats, you also have the better towing capacity and the ground clearance. This vehicle, in my opinion, is a great value where you're getting that utility, you're also getting that versatility. And when it comes to the practicality of this vehicle, you're gonna have right around 27 cubic feet of room behind the second row of seats. Now, this is not a class leader by any means, However, because you do have a higher roof line, you can stack things up back here. You can also maybe have a dog back here. And it's just a bit more family friendly overall. Then with the second row seats fold, you're looking at right around 70 cubic feet of room to work with. And really, again, this is one of the reasons why I love the Forest. I've been talking about this for two years. This vehicle is all around practical, where as we already demonstrated with the second row seats, you can fit kids back there, you can fit average size adults, but also when there's no one sitting back there, you have that practicality. You have that ability to load up this vehicle with snowboards or skiing equipment, and you can go to the mountains this time of year to have a lot of fun, or maybe even during the summer, go hiking with a good friend. That's one of the reasons why this vehicle, I think, is a great companion for avid adventurers. 
Then on either side of the rear cargo area, you have some quick release tabs to conveniently lower the second row of seats so you don't have to manually fold them and waste some time doing so. You can just easily load up this vehicle and you can be on your way. Then another thing that I really like about the Forester for the Wilderness is that you will have a spare tire underneath the floor mat. So if you do encounter a flat on your road trips or travels, you can fix that and be back on the road. And then finally, you will have a rear cargo cover, which will keep all your valuable items out of sight. So if you are like me and you have camera gear with you or anything of value, you can leave them back here and have that peace of mind knowing that no one will be able to peek in and steal what you have. And then once you're done, just press the button and the lift gate will close automatically. So in closing, I think it's very simple when it comes to Subaru Forester Wilderness. Is it a vehicle worth taking a look at? Absolutely. When you factor in the features that it's offering, such as the front facing camera, reverse automatic braking, that's standard. The water system fabric seats, which I think are more comfortable than the leather. Also, you have the 8-inch touchscreen with onboard navigation and the Harman Kardon premium audio system. Also, you have the practicality, the utility, the versatility, the better ground clearance, the better towing capacity. You can fit a lot more on the roof with the bigger roof rails. It, it's just, you can go on and on with this crossover. And I've always felt the Forester was the best vehicle in the lineup and the Wilderness just reinforces that. Now the Wilderness for the Outback, I felt completely changed the entire dynamics of the Outback where it finally felt like a crossover and not a car because the Outback is built on the same platform and is very similar to the Legacy. But the Forester, having the better ground clearance and more of that off-road suspension doesn't take away from the ride quality. And that's why I feel this is still family friendly, it's still a great value, and I think to me, in my opinion, the Wilderness trim is the best trim in the Forester lineup and totally worth the price of admission. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Boston Auto Blog, so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.